We're going to make a fabulous dish today. I've got some wild and domestic mushrooms. We're going to make mushroom strudel. This will impress your friends. You're going to love it. And it's super simple. Watch this. I've got some beautiful fresh mushrooms. We've got some shiitakes, which we saw the lads growing on the logs. We've got some chanterelle. Very fortunate we were able to get some beautiful fresh ones, golden chanterelle. And then I got some nice dried morel mushrooms. Now these are my favorite. My restaurant in Michigan, we used to use tons of these things in morel season in the month of May. We're not in the month of May. So what do we do? We buy them dry. When you buy the dry morels or any dried mushroom, what we've got to do is reconstitute. So I put them in a bowl, just cover them with some boiling water, leave them to steep. Now watch this here. When I take these out, I lift them out like so. I don't pour them and strain them because if you do that, what's going to happen is all the messy bits and the dirt and what have you that's on them in their natural state will end up on top of them again. They'll end up in your dish. You don't want that. So we just lift them out into the pan. Now I'm going to go from here over to here. Very few ingredients. You're going to love this dish. Come on. All right, and over to my trusty stove. Now, of course, I use all natural gas. But listen, this dish can be done on any electric, whatever you got. Uh, just make sure you're at a good, nice high heat to start it out, all right? Got to put a wee bit of olive oil on the bottom of the pan because we want to get our mushrooms rolling away. Water is an inherent part of the mushroom. And especially since we reconstituted these morels, we've got quite a bit of water. We're going to want to get that water out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start sauteing these. We're first going to get our beautiful fresh mushrooms, is get our mushrooms in there. Shiitake and, sh and uh, chanterelle, and at the same time, oh, and they go. You can hear them sizzling away there. They're going to give up their water. Oh, let me show you something. I kept this one on purpose. With your shiitake mushrooms, do you see these wee stems? You don't want them. The only thing this is actually good for is for making a mushroom stock if you needed one. You want that nice big flat head, that's what you want. Take a look here. We're rocking and rolling here with some beautiful mushrooms. We're just gonna let them cook just a wee minute. Now, as you're looking in here, let me tell you something. If you see that your pan is starting to dry up, because remember, mushrooms have a very spongy quality. Very spongy. So what they'll do is they will absorb all that oil if you're not careful. So sometimes what we have to do just add a wee bit more oil. It's no big deal. There's a process that happens because they hold so much moisture. Initially, when you put them into the pan, they will absorb whatever your medium is. If it's olive oil, as it is in this case, if it's butter, whatever you're cooking them in. But then after they've done that, cook them a little and they will start to release their own juices. And that's what we want these to do because that's when you really start to intensify the flavor. Now I'm going to drop me heat just a wee bit. Just a little bit. And you can see, the first thing you can see right away is major shrinkage. Now we don't like shrinkage, but it's all right with your mushrooms because you know, it's just part of the process. And what's, what's happening in here is the flavor is intensifying while they're cooking in there. They're giving up that flavor. It's all concentrating, it's caramelizing. Beautiful. Right about now, what I'm gonna want to do, all right, about a tablespoon of garlic going in there because you know you can never have enough garlic. I want to tell you, as soon as this, the aroma from this pan, what you're smelling, you're smelling the essence of the mushrooms. It's, get, it's got a strong, woody, it's like, oh, it's an earthy, meaty kind of a smell. It's absolutely gorgeous. There's nothing like wild mushrooms. They're nothing, those little white domestic things, those little pencil erasers you're eating from the supermarket, give over with those things. This is the way to go. Though I will tell you this, because mushrooms have really found their market and are really quite expensive, when you make a dish like this, or if you were to make a, a, a topping for a pasta or whatever, a sauce, that type of thing, a ragu with some veal or something, and you were using a lot of mushrooms, you can really fill this out with some domestic mushrooms, providing you cook them properly and you use the, exactly the same method. I'm, I'm, people tend to undercook mushrooms a little bit and you really don't get the value, the flavor. And domestic mushrooms don't have a lot of flavor, but you can use them for filler in a dish like this as long as you complement them with some really good, heady, marvelous, aromatic mushrooms like the ones we're using here today. So you can stretch it with the domestics. Okay, you can see again the mushrooms have, have absorbed an awful lot of the oil. I'm just going to add a wee touch. Clarified butter. Now it's time. A little bit of, this is minced shallot. White onion, yellow onion. Every bit is good, don't worry about it, if that's what you've got. All right, in it goes. Just a nice wee smattering like so. Now this is the time, right now, where we're gonna add our reconstituted morels. Time for them to hit the pan. 
Okay, we're going to pick them up. We're going to make sure that we give them a wee squeeze. I don't want excess water right now. Now I want you to take a look real here, real quick, at the water. Can you see? Can you see in there? You will see a lot of debris in the bottom of this mushroom water. That's what we were managing to avoid. By lifting the mushrooms out, that's what we avoided. We're not getting any of that dust and debris in there. Because remember, mushrooms are a product of the forest. So all the things that live in the forest live in the mushrooms. That's just how it is. Now, here's a fun part. Drop a brandy. Okay, we're going to flame these boyos. And here we go. That always gets a big applause. <laughs> Make sure your friends are there to watch. Which reminds me, people ask me all the time, what is this that I'm drinking here? Well, this may come as a shock to you, but this is actually filtered tap water that's been blessed by the priest. It's actually holy water. Lord, another miracle. <laughs> all right, now what we've done is we have cooked out all the alcohol, but the essence of the brandy is now in our pan. This is a wee bit of thickened veal stock, re heavily reduced. You can use a bit of brown gravy, does the trick just as well. Okay, in it goes. We're gonna use about, uh, about half a cup. Now you see what's happening there. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, time for our usual wee bit of salt and pepper. Now you see how that's tightening up for us? That's exactly what we want. And once again, this is, what's happening is here is that we are evaporating liquid and we're getting the water out and the flavor in. That's really what we want to do. And you see how nice and tight the mushrooms have absorbed so much of that veal stock right now. See how tight it's becoming one uniform mass? Okay, now we loosen it out again with a wee bit of heavy cream. This is going to be the last liquid that we add right here. Now we're going to, this is going to lighten and enrich the entire thing. We loosen it, we thicken it. We loosen it, we thicken it. And every time we do that, we're adding one more layer of flavor. That is, that is the technique of cooking. That's what it's all about. It is about intensifying flavors. Is that not a thing of beauty? Look at that. Do you see how plump those morels are now? Uh, if you could smell this. Uh, and now we're going to lower the heat just a tad, just a wee bit. You want to write it about, now we're, we're at about a medium heat, and what I'm going to do now is add the last things to this, which are going to be our herbs and flavoring agents. Okay, very simple. I have here some beautiful thyme. You just take your fingers like so, and you run it right down. The other herb that we're going to use in here today is going to be rosemary. Again, another real good, earthy, high aromatic sort of an herb, and it can stand up well to almost anything. When you're using fresh herbs, you need to use more of them, not less. See, so you need to use quite a few. If you could smell what I'm smelling right now, you would not leave my kitchen. It's absolutely stunning. Oh. Gastronomic perfume, that's what I'm getting out of this pan right now. So what's gonna happen now, I'm just going to let this cook just a wee bit more. Again, we're losing moisture, so it's tightening and tightening because this is going to have to roll up in pastry. So you can't have it all goopy goppy, so when you roll your pastry, it all floods out of it. So we needed this to tighten up real nice for us, okay? Now, my little green dish, and here's what I'm going to do. In goes my filling, okay? See that? So there's my filling. This is about 90% of the dish now finished. All right, look at this here. This is cooked down beautifully. These mushrooms are all tight, caramelized, flavorful. They have taken in all the flavors we added to the pan and they've given off all the water and moisture that was of no use to us. This is a thing of rare and wondrous beauty right here. This is most of the dish. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop it into my fridge, get it lovely and cold so I can handle it. Let's go over here. Nothing to it. In she goes. Now, I have some beautiful artisan goat cheese. This is a crushed pepper goat cheese. Beautiful, beautiful. And I've got some really nice aged Swiss, which I've already grated over here. So we're gonna bring it over to the table here. So these two cheeses together are gonna to combine because not only have we got that fantastic mushroom mixture, 
that we're going to roll in that phyllo, that crisp, gorgeous, golden phyllo dough, we're also going to add something else. We're going to put these cheeses together. And see, if you work the goat cheese just a little bit, it gets lovely and soft. Okay, so we're going to combine these cheeses now. So all we're doing, this is going to add yet one more element of intense flavor to that strudel. And I'm telling you, look, there's a little bit of preparation involved here. But once you get this down, and here's the beauty, most of this can be done the day before. And what I want to do in here is add some of this beautiful parsley, nice fresh herb. See that? And remember, you've already got rosemary. There's nothing else to it. You just mix them together, bippity-boppity-boo. The boy died and the girl left us. Nothing to it. Okay. Now we're going to take this and pop it in the fridge. I'm done. The cheese mixture and the mushroom mixture that we did on the stove are getting cool in the fridge. They're almost ready. So now it's time to play with our phyllo dough. You need to have either a piece of plastic or a nice moist towel when you go to work with this because all this is, believe it or not, is flour and water. Now because it is so inc incredibly delicate, you handle it with care and it needs several sheets to make a layer. A lot of people want to take this and they'll paint it up and down and up and down with butter. Not necessary. I just want you to do this because we don't want, look at all the beautiful richness we have in our mushroom mixture. There's such a thing as making food too rich. We want this to be just perfect. You know how I love perfect. What I'm doing is I'm dotting it with butter. You don't paint the whole thing with butter because if you do that, we're going to have four layers on here. So if you were to paint the whole thing with butter, every single layer, it would be oozing. It'd be way too much. You don't want that. We've got a beautiful, rich mushroom mixture, so we don't want it overly rich. And the last one, spread it out. So now we've got four beautiful layers of phyllo, and these, we gotta work quickly here because it will start drying very quickly. So what we're going to do now is going to get our cheese, we're going to get our mushrooms, and let's grab them. Because they need to get in there right away. Okay, and we're ready to go. Like I said, we're going to move fairly quickly now because what we want to do, we simply get a nice big old scoop of this. Look at this. Right in the center. Just like that. Get some more on here. Right in the center. Just about like so. Now what I'm doing here, this is either <clears throat> a lunch or dinner portion. You, I used to do these tiny little ones where this would make four and they would be terrific little appetizers. Now once I've got the mushroom mixture on, I go into my cheese mixture, and you just shape it with your hand. Look, just shape it with your hand. Nothing too fancy. Just use your fingers, no problem. Beautiful. Now, again, butter, because remember, the butter is the glue. Once it's all tucked in nice, do is we're going to start rolling these. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, see that? It's a thing of beauty. This fella, we're going to take him now, we're going to pop him onto our buttered cooking sheet right here. Huh? And he's going to go into the oven. Okay. Been in there about 15 minutes. 375. As you can see, it's golden. And it's beautiful. Okay, I've got a beautiful bit of vinaigrette that I made. Nice garlicky vinaigrette. Nothing to it. And all we're doing is making a nice little pillow on the plate. We're going to take our strudel here, and what I like to do, I like to cut it on a diagonal, and you'll see inside when I do it how beautiful this really is. So you have a nice sharp knife, serrated knife. We're going to cut on a bias like that. One piece to the bottom. The second, and I sort of prop it up, you see. Sort of prop it up on there. Oh, look at that. You wouldn't find the like of that in the finest restaurant. This is a great dish. You can do this dish at home, I promise you. And the final result, absolutely knock your socks off. So give it a whiz, will you? See you 90 miles down the road. For the complete recipe and much more, check us out online at 90milestv.com and on Facebook. 90 Miles with Chef Garrett is proud to have been brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourism. We want you to explore the possibilities of Tennessee. The stage is set for you. Log on to TNVacation.com for everything you need to see in Tennessee.